Welcome to AD Getting Started Module 1. This module will walk through the initial setup and configuration process. Once AD is installed, the tool can be started from the PCB Start menu, either by clicking on it if it's in the recently used listings, or by navigating from the All Programs Start menu to the Altium folder. Starting with licensing, click on the Admin tab to show the license management view. This view shows that we already have acquired a license. So let's release and reuse it to illustrate how the licensing works. Selecting the license shown, click on Release. Now you can see the warning about it being unlicensed. To select a license, highlight it, click on Use, and now we're licensed again. Clicking on the Extensions and Updates tab, you'll notice that there are three options, Installed, Purchased, and Updates. The Installed tab shows what extensions are currently installed. Note the schematic symbol generation tool icon has already been included in the installed section. That would normally come in the purchased section. Let's look at the purchase tab. The purchase tab shows you the extensions that are not installed. These would include free extensions as well as extensions that require licensing. One extension that I've mentioned earlier was the symbol generation tool. I would suggest adding that now. Moving to the updates tab, we can check on the currently installed version of Altium Designer and for any updates to the system extensions or software extensions. Clicking on the gear in the upper right hand side, we can check our preferences for how often we look for updates and whether we have a global or a local installation. Closing the preferences window, let's move on. Now that the tool is licensed and the extensions configured, we can move on to customizing the tool preferences. Let's go back to the DXP pull-down menu and select the Preferences option. This brings up the Preferences window. Here we can set up the Altium Designer options under the listed categories. One thing to note, these preferences are stored locally and apply when running Altium on the particular PCB platform. Looking under the System category, let's look at General. We can enable the startup options for Altium Designer. If you are working on one design at a time, for example, checking the Reopen Last workspace can be a time saver. One instance where it makes sense to leave this unchecked would be if you are in a consulting role or if you work on many different designs. In that case, you would open up AD and then open the project you wish to work on. This would be faster than opening up AD, closing the last project worked on, and then opening up the desired project. Selecting the View icon, you can see a few options for the speed of the pop-up panels and some general information about how things are presented from within Altium. Looking at the Documents bar section located on the lower right of the window, you can determine how and whether or not you want to group documents in the project panel. Notice that I typically would check the By Document Kind option. Grouping also based on projects is another option that can prove handy if you are working on multiple projects simultaneously. Clicking on the Account Management icon, we see the option to auto-connect to Altium as well as auto-sign-in for Altium Live. Continuing with the system preferences, let's look under Transparency. Here you note that both Transparent Floating Windows and Dynamic Transparency are checked. Enabling these two options is recommended. This allows the tool to hide pop-up menus and toolbars if they would prevent the user from seeing the active window. The best example of this is when placing a component out of the library. The library panel covers the schematic sheet, making placement difficult. With this option enabled, the library panel hides to allow for the placement of the component on the schematic. Continuing under the System folder, let's look at the Navigation's options. The settings in the Highlighting section provide positive feedback when selecting items. In the Cross Select Mode section, we can enable cross selecting components between the schematics and PCB. This is a useful option during PCB placement and while exploring a design. Looking at Design Insight, we have a number of options that give you pop ups or additional information when hovering over files and components in the design. Note the current boxes checked are a good starting point. Looking at the Projects panel, we can see there are a number of options that affect how the files in the Projects panel are displayed. 
under the General Category section, I would ensure that the Show Open Modified Status checkbox has been checked to indicate when a file has been changed. Looking at the default locations, we can see where the tool's default document path, library path, and output job paths are located. You can change this as needed. Looking under the Desktop Layouts options, there is a simple way to restore the look and feel of the windows for the Altium. Simply select the Apply Default Layout or Startup Layout buttons to restore the original look. The mouse can also be configured from the Mouse Wheel Configuration icon. Under the Installation icon, the settings for tool updates can be configured as well. You will note that there are a number of other preference categories for Altium. We will look at them in the coming modules in conjunction with their associated tool features. This concludes Module 1. In our next module, we will introduce the window-based Altium design environment.